Um, thanks to everyone for coming here today and big thanks to uh, WCVA for putting on this great event. Um, just to let everyone know, this session is being recorded, so we are trialling a hybrid uh, pilot with WCBA for a couple of sessions here at this scoreboard tree. So this session is being recorded. We can share the link with you all afterwards. If you did want to uh, look back or if you want to share it with colleagues, that's all fine as well. And if anyone can't make it today, then so they can um, watch it back on the feed then. So just a quick agenda. Um, my name is Mark Price. I'm the Business Development Director here at Pew. Uh, so I'll be covering a bit bit around the PU intro and about what we do, some of our services. We're also joined by Avion, our technical director. Uh, so Avion will look a bit more about modern workplace and co-pilot AI and go into a bit more depth on them. And we're also joined by Elved, our IT manager and head of AV. So Elved's going to be talking a bit more and doing a live demo around the smart interactive board and look at, looking at some case studies with me later on there. Um, it's also great to be joined uh, remotely by Naveed from Microsoft as well. So Naveed works for the Microsoft TSI team, so the Tech for Social Impact, and Naveed will go through some of the support that Microsoft provide for nonprofits and some of the offers around donation licenses and Azure credits and things like that, then so you can all take advantage of them straight away. So if, if you don't know who we are, just a quick intro. So we're based in Shannon near Aberystwyth on the west coast of Wales. Um, we offer all our services in English and Welsh, so from sales, general conversations. We can do events in Welsh. We do uh, training, adoption, everything in Welsh. Then we can do bilingually. So we, we specialise in software licensing and compliance, as you can see there modern workplace and security and sustainable and inclusive hybrid meeting spaces and like a similar kind of approach like we're doing here today. Um, we've been around for 43 years, so we've been around a long time and we specialize in the voluntary sector. So we've been uh, a WCBA trusted supplier now for many years as well, as well as a Microsoft partner there you can see and also a smart and gay link partner. So we'll see a bit more about them later on in the presentation. Now. So first of all, um, I'll pass over to Avion. So like I said, Avion's going to explain a bit more about modern workplace and go into a bit more detail on a couple of those topics then. So. OK, thanks, Mark. For it, uh, good morning, all of you. Um, so I'm Avion, Technical Director at Pew. I've been there far too long, over 30 years. When I started, I was sat at my desk on a Windows 95 machine big desk up on my desk. I was running office. I had CRM on a big server in the cupboard hidden under the stairs. We had um, all our files stored on there. Um, email was run off there. And all of this on a machine that was running Dr. Solomon's antivirus. It had um, a firewall to protect us all and keep us safe and all was well and good and that's that was life um probably 30 years ago now. um some of you might have heard about the modern workplace and what it is in reality it's just what i was doing 30 years ago i still need to use word i still need to use excel powerpoint I still need to access my CRM systems, my documents. The only big change now is where I work from. So that's what the real difference with a modern workplace is. So now I still need to use Word, Excel and PowerPoint, but I use the Office 365 version. So a cloud version of it. Just to avoid any confusion, it still sits on your laptop. It's just connected to the cloud. So in the cloud, you have your storage, which is your um, all your documents in OneDrive and SharePoint. You will have your email with Exchange Online. So no matter where you're working from, you've got access to all your documents. So that's Office 365. It's made a big difference to the way you work. Because Last night I was working on this presentation. I was working on the demo from the hotel room. I had access to everything I needed from them. So that's the real difference in the modern workplace. Teams as well in 
Office 365 has made a big difference where you can chat, come into meetings, um, and keep in touch with everybody. This, even though we're running on a big screen here, it's actually running within Teams, and we've got a Teams hybrid session connected to external workers at the same time. So Office 365 has made things a lot more productive for people and that they can work wherever they want to. Another big change was the devices. You can now carry a laptop about the place. I remember the first laptops that weighed about two tons. Um, so now they're a lot more powerful. They're a lot easier to carry like these surfaces we've got here. Um, but any laptop will do because they've got a camera, a mic on it, so you can do anything you want from wherever. And one thing I'm quite excited about, Microsoft are bringing out, this is because I'm a geek, Microsoft are bringing out new services with what's called NPUs or, or neural processing units. So the benefit of this is a lot of the processing for AI will be able to be done on the machines moving forward into the future. Um, on top of that, then, you have Microsoft Azure. Remember I said you've got these big servers and use stairs? Your IT guys don't need them any longer. Things like your CRM systems, Microsoft have got Dynamics 365, I know the WCDA make use of, Salesforce and all that's running in the cloud. So again, you get access to it for whatever you want. Um, so people are putting all these server applications online for you to use. But if you've got your own specific, somebody's developed a database for you to do your CRM, what you can do, you can move that to the cloud. So Microsoft got a draw, you've got AWS as well. Um, so this allows you to move your servers into virtual machines in Azure. So now your servers are running in the cloud. You don't have to go to the expense of buying a new server or anything like that. Azure does a lot more than running servers. You can have storage in there. You can back up to there. You can create your own AI systems in there. So all that's run in Azure. So these are services from Microsoft that help us with the modern workplace and work from wherever we want. Okay. This is a new productivity component in Office 365. So you will need Office 365 to be able to run this. So what is Copilot? Well, it's AI. So just to be clear, AI isn't new. It's been around since the 60s. Um, you're using AI every day. Your antivirus software, for instance, has been using AI for years to actually get machines to decide if it's a virus or not, rather than having humans sat in front of machines. You've got then things like transcription and um, voice recognition in Teams. That's running on AI. But in your day-to-day -day life as well, you've got Alexa, you've got Siri, you've got Netflix's recommendation engine. That's all AI. So AI is in everywhere now. But you've probably been living under a rock if you haven't heard a lot about AI over the last five months. The reason for that is a new category of AI called generative AI or gen AI. Um, one of the leading uh, Gen AI um, companies at the moment is OpenAI, who have got ChatGPT. Some of you might have, might have used ChatGPT. So the reason there's the excitement about this is that it creates documents and helps you with your day-to-day -day work. Now, what Microsoft have done is they've taken ChatGPT put it into your Office 365 tenancy with your own large language model. So it's safe within that tenancy. And 
then integrated it even further into all their products. So you can now do Gen AI from within your Word documents, Outlook, PowerPoint, whatever you want. And I'll try and demo as much as I can towards the end of this session. I've only got 10 minutes, so I don't know how much I can show you. But uh, yeah, that's there. Right. Don't worry about this slide. It looks very technical, but nothing to worry about. So in this corner here, let's just use that at the laptop. The important bit here is this white dotted line that goes around everything. That's your Office 365 tenancy, which means everything is done within your Office 365. So down this corner, you've got the large language model. That is ChatGPT. <clears throat> Yeah, so Microsoft have given you your own chat PDT there. That's safe within your office with high tendency. Okay. The benefit of that is um, it's within your own tenancy. It's your because you're going to be using your own data in here, but it's within your own tenancy, and Microsoft don't train that model. So anything you do doesn't get incorporated into the next edition of ChatGPT. Yeah, whatever you do is your own data. So here then is what Copilot does. Copilot takes your prompt or the question you give AI, and it actually does um, some responsible AI stuff in there to make sure that you're not trying to um, create election fraud or whatever, whatever it is, that the, all these checks are going on in the system. Okay, then there's Microsoft Graph. Now Microsoft Graph, um, this gives you access to all your files in Office 365. So your um, OneDrive and SharePoint, this gives you access to your documents within now the Gen AI service. Okay, it uses the Microsoft Graph. It's a technical term, but all that is, that's what looks at your data and knows what files you have access to. Okay. So in an essence, that's Copilot. It's ChatGPT working within your own tenancy and um, your own data. Okay, right. So what I've talked about now is what's made you all productive, what's made you able to work from outside your organization. The biggest problem was, go back 30 years, you had antivirus on your machine, you had a firewall, all great. Now you're working from anywhere. So your techies or whoever's looking after your systems now have to worry about your machines wherever you are, in the hotel, on a train, working from home. You're not inside that firewall you had previously. Okay, so what we've got then is what's called Microsoft 365. Now what Microsoft 365 simply is Office 365, all your product and your tools, but with additional security products on top so that you can keep everybody safe no matter where you are. Okay, so one of the things I would say, if it's the only thing you take out to today, try and make sure that you're on Microsoft 365 and not just Office 365 because security is a big problem and you'll only worry about it if you get hacked. That's the reality of the world we're in. So, so what is um, Microsoft 365? Well, it's Office 365, but it adds additional features. So Microsoft Enter down here. This is the bit that keeps your users and passwords safe. You probably all use it already. If you have to go and go to a phone app to put a number in when you log in to your device, you're already using Entra. 
you're using multi-factor authentication within entries. The other thing in there as well is conditional access policies, which are rules your techies can set up to make sure that your machine is safe before they even give you access to office list. Um, then there's Microsoft Intune down this corner. This is a techie tool, totally a techie tool. It's something that they can now access your machines and manage them wherever you are. Whereas when you were in your network, it was easy to turn. Now they need new special tools to look at your machines. Um, another thing in here then is Microsoft Defender. Now Microsoft Defender is Microsoft's latest antivirus. It's got anti-ransomware in there. It's got um, zero day threat protection. So it's Microsoft's latest version of the antivirus software. Good tool used by some big companies and some big colleges we work with. However, if you've got another antivirus product, it doesn't matter. So if you're using Sophos Intercept X, for instance, you, you know, you're covered. But if you have Microsoft 365, Microsoft Defender is in there already. Okay, so from a security point of view, these are tools that you need to keep everybody safe. Okay. Um, so the other part of Microsoft Teams then is the ability to host meetings like we're doing here um, using what's called Microsoft Teams Rooms. Now Microsoft Teams Rooms in reality is just a camera, it's a speaker, it's a microphone, um, it's a microphone, you probably have a big screen. That allows you internally to host your own meetings designed specific, specifically to keep in touch with all your users which are out in the road, which in the charity sector can be very um, popular. The other thing you can do with Teams, you can actually put your phone system directly within your Teams client. So you can have it on your desk um, and take your phone calls in there whenever you want. So, who work with um, meeting spaces and we can provide systems that suits whatever area you want. So quite a popular one is a little huddle room with two or three uh, desks with speaker, um, easy join device and um, a camera. And this allows a few users to carry on and work with and have meetings with external users in a very simple way. They just walk in, touch a button on that back on that screen, and you're up and working. Similarly, you can have them in big rooms like this room. In reality, it's exactly the same stuff. You might have multiple cameras, like the one up there and the one there. And you might have multiple speakers depending on the quality of the sound in here. And you can do things like have automated blinds so that you get the lighting right, or you can have dimmable lights to make sure, you know, that the lighting levels is right for whatever type of meeting it is. But, you know, speak to Pew and or specifically Alfred, and he can help you with that. So the final piece in the Teams meeting room are the smart boards. Well, smart boards, it can be any any board, it can be a television, but the benefit of this is we're running PowerPoint on here. We're running Teams meetings on here. Um, I could, for instance, use a touch screen to move over to the next slide for the person coming on. OK, and I'm pretty much on time there. So I'm going to pass you over to Elved, who's our IT manager. Who's so, our uh, hero? Get make sure everything works. He's has to press a few buttons here just because we're trying to do lots of different things at the same time. But uh, you know, we spec up a room that is just pretty much plug and play. Thank you, Adrian. 
Yeah, um, just a really quick introduction here to uh, Microsoft Whiteboard. Um, so everyone's already gone through with you the advantages uh, of a Microsoft Teams Room solution uh, along with uh, an interactive board. But uh, I want to show this um, piece of software with you. We use it a lot at work and I'll give you um, a quick scenario. So my boss will phone me up and say, oh, I've got an idea. He wants uh, a new website or something. And he'll say, um, go and have a think about it, uh, get some ideas together and come back to me. So first thing I'll do is uh, I'll open up Whiteboard and I can start putting some notes down with advantages, disadvantages, uh, people that we need to be working with, what our competitors are doing. Um, and I'll jot all these ideas down in the uh, in Whiteboard. And then uh, next morning uh, I'll go and see Jeffrey uh, and I'll go up to this board and I'll open um, the work that I did previously, the previous day on my surface at my workstation. And I'll open up on the work, on the board here and we'll start discussing uh, the ideas I have. And then um, as we start discussing it, um, he'll maybe say something like, oh, we need to bring in uh, another colleague to further discuss a certain idea. So in this example, I've got Tom. Um, actually, Tom is sitting there, but we'll, for, for the purposes of the demonstration, we'll pretend he's on the other side of the world. Because he could be literally anywhere in the world. So I can see now that Tom is actually collaborating with me here. You can see his mouse movement. And in a Teams meeting environment, we could be talking and collaborating vocally as well. But um, he can also change any content here. So you can add additional content. We can see exactly live, um, exactly what he's doing on the screen. Um, and I can also, as I edit as well, I can add my own um, information in here as well. Um, and that's a really easy way of collaborating with colleagues uh, that are not in, in the same room as you. And once we finish the meeting, I can take it back to my workstation. I can carry on exactly where we've left off, add more um, material to the to the meet to the to the mic board and continue um, on. Um, you can share it with colleagues quite easily by sharing it to the link. Um, you can even um, export it to a PDF. You can um, add different templates. So there's loads of templates. If you've got Office, if you already have um, an Office 365 license or Microsoft 365 license, the chances are you already, you already have access to this. It's definitely worth having a look at. Um, these templates, there's loads of them in there. So brainstorming, they've, they've got all these templates ready for you. And you just open them up and start, start using it. It's definitely worth having a go. Thank you, Elved. That looks great. So, um, so next we're going to just a uh, couple of minutes go over some quick sort of projects or case studies we've done using some of these um, technologies. So one of them is actually with WCVA themselves. So um, we supply the WCVA with a Microsoft 365 licenses um, on a CSP licensing model then through Microsoft. So it's a flexible model where you can pay monthly and add licenses as you go easily. Um, especially when they're using the Pew Cloud Portal, which we provide. So any um, any WCVA member staff, as long as they've been given permissions by Rodri, for example, or whoever it would be, can log on there on any device. It's a web-based uh, portal. They can add licenses if they need at midnight or any time, and that will still come through Pew. So they maintain the added value and the support through Pew without having to go direct to Microsoft. So they keep that relationship. Um, so yeah, we've been working with WCBA for years now, including when they moved to the new head office in Cardiff uh, over the last few years. Um, and we we put in some Teams rooms actually. So do you want to just talk about that? Yeah, for a few minutes, yeah no problem, Mark. So yeah, Rodri uh, approached us and he said, uh, we're moving into a new office. I'm really busy doing other things. What we need is a team Zoom solution with, um, and they'd vary, so they'd be really small huddle rooms up to really large uh, rooms. He said, I know I need a, a team Zoom solution. I don't know what to get. Uh, so he came to us and we, um, I, I asked him, well, he, 
come and see us at our head office in Thon, um, where we have an experience centre. Uh, we went through the options available to him and we showed off the various hardware that uh, he, he, he was available to him. And um, as, as a result, we kitted out all the, 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 the rooms for him. And uh, I think it's been a, a great success for them. Yeah, and yeah, like you see there, we've got a couple of quotes there from Roger actually. So he was very happy that um, staff were much better informed across the WCVA. Um, so he said there was actually a 13 times increase, I think, in the number of meetings they were doing because people could join from the offices all across Wales. Um, and even mentioning things like, you know, the, the work life balance that people could join remotely when they need to or be in the office. Um, I could all work together and collaborate you know that that was um a big plus for him as well so another one just just quickly so shandawi brevi community hall is another one we did um this one is actually grant funded uh, through canal academy and that's something that we can support with so a lot of non-profits obviously come to us um budgets might be tight and we can work with them to find out what grants are available um and work with them through the grant process then to make sure that the, the application they put in aligns with the outputs of the grant then to make sure that every every party's happy. Um, and one of, one of them is the local community council. So that's an important one at the moment, especially when <clears throat> the requirement has come in so that they, they do need to be run hybrid now. So that's that's a big plus. And I think the, the football club is another interesting one. Do you want to just explain quickly? On yeah, that? so they've got um, a, a local football club and they were um, they, they wanted to prove the, the team's performance and they with again with the grant money they they purchased a GoPro that would capture the whole game and they would then um, on their training uh, training night then they'd review the the game on the on the previous Saturday and they'd um, view the game on on a very similar board to this so a big whiteboard uh, where they'd be the whole team would be able to view the game back but then they'd be able to key it to, to pause it on key moments and then annotate on the screen using the pens to see uh, where the players were um, pr probably um, they needed to move into a better position um, and also uh, show where they were uh, their, their weaknesses and the strengths uh, during the game. Uh, so it's made a massive difference to them. But as part of the package that we provided to them, uh, we, we gave them training. So we just don't provide the hardware. We also provide the training, so I've done uh, two evening training sessions of them. Um, I think that was a, a key uh, key thing for them. It's one thing having the hardware, but it's another thing to know how to use it. Um, so that I think it was a, a great success for them then as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, and Jen, then just quickly, so we, we've done quite a few of these projects. So we've worked with Mantish Gwynedd, Hubby Key Cymru, Erith, you can see there, uh, the Wallach and Midyad Maithrin as well. So. That's just a couple more examples and a lot of those case studies are up on our website in full and if you did want to um, read more about them. So the next section then before I move to Avion again, um, who's going to be doing more of a live demo on Copilot, we have got just a quick video just to show Copilot in action. I know some of you may have used it already but some might not have heard of it so just a short clip to see uh, what it's capable of.
There we are. So uh, yeah, over to you, Avion, who's going to do a bit of a live demo. <coughs> OK, don't worry if you can't see me sat in the corner here. Um, it's going to be presenting on the screen. I'm doing it off from my laptop for a team session only to make it quicker because of the amount of time I've got. In reality, it could be done only on that screen today, but watching the type on there will be. Okay, so what I did in the hotel last night, I created some sample documents using Copilot. So it's created um, a fictional uh, charity, Aboriginal and Pet Welfare Trust. It's created mission uh, statements and funding strategies, sample case studies, testimonials. None of this is true. I created this last night in two minutes with Copilot. OK. So if we look at Copilot, I don't want that, so I'm going to get my browser back up. So to get Copilot up, you have this button in the top right hand corner. If you click that, it'll bring this uh, sidebar up for you. Now, you can either do that or you can have it full screen. To get access to this, you need Office 365. You need to go to copilot to Microsoft.com, sign into Office 365, and you will get access to this functionality I'm showing you here. This is free as part of Office 365. Okay. The good stuff comes later and what's up to have a license fee for that. OK. So um, because I'm not very creative, I came up with a name last night that isn't very um, fun or anything like that. So um, if we look here, we go to chat GPT and it's fast and balanced in what the style of the response I'm going to get. If I click on creative, and what I'm going to do just for a bit of fun is ask it, in, ask it to provide me 10 names for a charity based in Aberero, West Wales, same with the welfare of dogs. So hopefully now you will come up with some sample web names, something fun to start with. Welsh wolves, the welfare. You know, it's far more creative than I could be. OK, so that's a very simple thing you can do. Um, so what I'm going to do as well is cut and paste some of these prompts. So as I said, a prompt is, is just a question you ask Copilot. So if I go there and come back here, so I'm now going to ask it to go out to the web and get me some ideas of fundraising ideas that I can be using in the chat or something. So unlike something like Google, it doesn't can we bring back a list of web websites. It brings back a response for you that it's written. But if you look as you come along, there's numbers next to some of the responses. So you can click on that number, go into the, um, it'll take you to the website so you can ha have more details about what is going on there. But this is the sort of thing you can do. Okay, now this is the free bit. Now, if you don't pay for the license, you don't have this button on the top of the screen with web and work. OK, so if you go on to work, what I'm going to do now is ask it. OK, so this is the problem as we're doing demos.
because now I've clicked the work button, it's now working within Office 365. So I'm asking it to provide me with information on what has been successful events we had before. And I've put some data into Office 365 and it will um, come back with inf some information we have. I wouldn't worry too much with what it brings back because these are just some But it's the sort of thing you can do. You can search what you've done before and say, give me examples of you know what was successful in the past. Okay. So from within this browser, you now have access to Office 365 and your data within Office 365. The sort of things you can do from here, you can say, um, tell me what um, what emails and messages I've had regarding this event over the last 10 days, because I've been away on holiday, and it'll give you a list of emails and things that gives, gives you focus on that task for today. Okay, so if we move on from here then, and uh, we can go to the whiteboard that Elvin mentioned earlier. So um, you can be then working on ideas on how to um, put together this event. You decided that the event is going to be an auction evening um, held locally. So um, if you click on the um, icon, then you go and um, what back into here. Yeah. What this will do. You, you could have gone onto the board and started writing ideas out on the board, but this is now coming back with a suggestion of notepads, of um, sticky notes that you have on the screen that you can use to start organizing your events. It's the same as sticking um, sticky notes across a room and bringing it all together, but you now have access to it, that's something you can clear it from wherever you want. And I'm going to ask you to generate a few more ideas and I'm going to insert them into here. Now what I want to do as well is I want to categorize these to make it easier to work with and Copilot has automatically organized them into different sections for you to work on. Copilot then has to leave it to you to do all the work, okay, in this instance. So once you put everything together, um, you can go to Word and put together a document plan proposal for what you want to put forward. So I'm now asking within Word for it to write a proposal for a charity event um, for hosting an auction in the town hall, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You come up with this question yourself. The more detail you give it, the better the answer is. So it's going to go away now and create a proposal for that one. So target audience, purpose. Yeah, it's creating this document. This document might not be perfect, but you've got this document, you then read it to make sure and alter it as you need. So it's going to do most of the work for you. It's still down to you to make sure it's right. Okay. So it's created that work document for you with a proposal that you can create for. Now what you want to do is you want to create a presentation for you to run on the night of the event. So create a visually appealing and vibrant tutorial slides to be presented at your charity evening 
And I'm now referencing that document that I showed you earlier on with the mission statement. Here. So while that's running, it's going away, looking at that document, analyzing it, the magic is happening. I don't know what it does. I don't think anybody knows what it does. Um, and it's going to put together a set of slides for you. Those slides will have pictures in there, text in there. It's again, it's a basis for you to decide how to go on. All this, all these pictures are loyalty free because they're generated by the AI. They're not from a, a stock source. It is creating these for you. Okay, so they've created a set of slides with an agenda, mission statement, funding strategies, some case studies, the nice pictures in there, um, and some testimonials, blah, blah. So it's created the slide for you all in two minutes. Yeah? Okay. What am I on time? I'm a little bit over, but. Um, Probably do one more, one more quick one. Um, so what we want to do next is we want to send out an email to our, to our all our um, supporters now to ask them to come and support us on it. So you can just click on Draft with Copilot, come here, um, got the wrong document. And it's going to generate an email for you to send out. Depending on the size of these emails, I just mean I can write just quick it myself. But you know, if you stuck for where to start, it'll get me going. And this result, you can edit it any way you want. You can make it more formal, more uh, easy going. You can even turn it into a poem. I don't know why you'd want that, but you know, that's the sort of stuff you can do. Okay, I'm over time, but the other thing that I like to do in there is to use Teams. These Teams meetings are recorded. You've got transcripts and the video. You can use Copilot to give you a recap of the meeting. So summary of the meeting. You can ask it for any actions from within the meeting. So all that is, so Copilot is built into all of Office. And the reality is you will use it in the way that suits you. I'm just trying to give you some ideas to get you thinking about the way it works. And apologies, I've run over the map. So I think uh, we're straight on to Naveed after this. Yeah, so um, Naveed now is going to uh, talk to you about Microsoft support for charities. He's the uh, tech ambassador for Firstly, a huge thanks to you guys at Pew for uh, allowing me the opportunity to present and um, uh, you know, it's an absolute pleasure to be here today to present to you guys around the Tech for Social Impact programme. So my name is Naveed Iqbal, I'm the uh, UK Ambassador for Tech for Social Impact um, and I'm honoured to be here today to share with you more about our efforts to create a, a positive impact for people and the planet. But today I just want to spend a couple of time, a couple of minutes just to share our fundamental approach to driving social impact, which is our vision at Tech for Social Impact. And I just want to start by saying I think I've got probably one of the best jobs here at Microsoft. I get to work with the nonprofits, you guys, and see the amazing stuff that you're doing, but I also get to work with our partners such as Pew and, 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 and look at the, the amazing support they provide you uh, on your IT journey. So is that, has the next slide come up, guys? Sorry, I'm having a bit of a technical issue here. Can you see the next slide? We're still on the same slide. OK, I'm not sure why it's doing that. Let's uh, try that again. One sec. Yeah, there we are. Cool, good stuff. So, so at Microsoft, we believe that technology is a powerful force for empowering people and organisations. We all see it every day in our work, whether it's data, 
or AI help and predict malaria outbreaks or humanitarian organisations delivering digital literacy to displaced people. And we truly believe that the success of the nonprofit and the NGO sector is critical to how we achieve our mission as a company. But to do this, we, we must make the benefits of world class technology accessible and relevant for nonprofits like you guys, NGOs and IGOs. So as a customer first partner led company, we start with the needs of our customers, which is you guys, and we work with our partners such as Pew to deliver the best outcomes for each organization. Now, we take a look at the world. It's changed so much in profound and fundamental ways. We've seen the role of technology have a positive impact as we all try to survive through this pandemic. The level of technology adoption has rapidly accelerated. Now, as we think about that pace of transformation, we have to understand the consequences of that transformation, as well as what our role in that transformation is. Now, we see a digital divide, an opportunity continuing to grow, but many, many people are left behind. So the number of children in sub-Saharan Africa that are literate at the age of 10, so that's when you stop learning to read and you read to learn, is 10%. So 90% of children can't read in sub-Saharan Africa. That means they can't get a job. That means the economic opportunity gap is growing and COVID had an impact and technology has a huge, huge role to play. We also look at the persistent fundamental rights issues. Now we're seeing tragic and unlawful wars unfolding more so than ever. We see human rights today and every day on the news being violated across the world and technology has a role to play there. We're also seeing an urgent climate crisis. In 2021, at the end of June, it was 106 degrees uh, Fahrenheit in Seattle. And in the Netherlands, it was also baking at that time. And I believe we've also just had the hottest May on record. Now that's not normal. And there's a role for technology to play in supporting the world to become a cooler and better place. And then there's this diminishing trust in big technology organizations. There's questions about our motives, our motivations. And it's critical that we apply technology and innovations to address these challenges without sacrificing our core values, such as trust, privacy, transparency, and inclusion. So we realized we needed to evolve and think about a different business model role in supporting societal changes and organizations and nonprofits like you guys that serve this purpose. So back in 2017, Microsoft Philanthropies brought its contribution efforts together with commercial sales and business development, and we created Tech for Social Impact. We created Tech for Social Impact to empower every nonprofit and humanitarian organization to accelerate social good. Now, as we help, as we work to help everyone achieve more, we're committed to sharing our learning and reporting our progress across a variety of societal causes, such as affordable housing, digital skilling, and climate change, just to name a few. Now, give you a couple of examples. We've helped to reduce 21 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent by our top suppliers. And every month we analyze over 470 billion emails for malware and phishing attempts. We combine our grants with nonprofit commercial engagement in a single team to accelerate impact through technology, deliver solutions to empower social breakthroughs, and we help accelerate Microsoft's philanthropic efforts through our efforts and those of our partners such as Pew. We don't just provide technology grants, we also reinvest any profits made from discounted sales to larger charities back in the sector to help the smaller ones. And we give free software to those with 10 or fewer employees, which makes up about 80% of the world's 10 million nonprofit organizations. And we also help nonprofits modify Microsoft software to help with their specific needs, such as fundraising and mobilizing volunteers in part connecting them with willing helpers in the company's global partner ecosystem. And we also offer free digital skills training. So as of March 2021, over 30 million learners have been reached as part of our global skills initiative. Now, 
the work that we do in tech for social impact and the broader philanthropies organization is is quite possibly some of the best and most powerful work in bringing these pillars to life the tech for social impact team is truly committed to this sector and the idea that is absolute core to our mission to empower every nonprofit and international organization with microsoft technology to help you guys to accelerate social good and we've got so many examples of how we do this so let's just take a look at a couple now so our partnership with unicef is a great example of how we directly support inclusive economic growth as i mentioned a couple of minutes ago 10 percent of children in sub-saharan africa can read and effectively 90 percent cannot unicef terms this gap learning poverty if you can't read it's very hard to learn which in turn impacts your economic prospects. So through our Learning Passport Partnership, we've deployed community training to assist with this crisis in 23 countries, and 20 are in currently in process. Millions of kids have registered, and 300,000 have completed training. And some of the hardest to reach locations are actually adopting the fastest. The two biggest adopters at the moment are Laos and Somalia. And then when we look at uh, our impact in committing to a sustainable future. Who's helping us there? So the National Forest Foundation is a nonprofit that helps preserve and protect wildlife habitat forestry across 193 million acres of national forest system. So in partnership with Threshold World, the National Forest Foundation is able to implement Microsoft Cloud solutions for nonprofit. They're now able to track donors and quantify the impact of their work and further their mission of environmental restoration and conservation. So each dollar essentially raised directly um, translates to a, another tree planted or preserved. And then lastly, uh, how do we protect fundamental rights? Uh, United-based nonprofit Bernardos connects hundreds of thousands of families and children in need with valuable social services each year. And they're particularly passionate about protecting the uh, fundamental rights and safety health of children. To best make most of those connections, they need to ensure that the employees have the right technology they need to work efficiently and accurately. And the organization also needs to show potential donors that its work's got concrete impact by deploying cloud solutions uh, and Microsoft Surface devices. Um, they've helped employees be more effective in the field and it's gained valuable reporting capabilities that has been essential in securing funding to meet the increased demand, particularly during the COVID-19 pandemic. So, as I briefly mentioned earlier, you know, the work that we do in the broader Microsoft Tech, tech for Social Impact and Philanthropies is some of the best uh, work that we do to bringing, um, you know, the pillars to life. But we also provide um, grants and discounted licensing to nonprofit via our partners, such as Pew. Uh, for example, Microsoft 365 Business Premium, um, it's free for up to 10 users. And as I mentioned to you guys earlier, 80% of the world's nonprofit organizations are, are 10 users or less. Uh, and then there's further discounts available of $5.50 per user per month uh, for additional users, which equates to about 60 to 70% discount uh, off, off list price. Uh, there's also Power BI desktop um, discounts, um, but there's also an Azure credit. Um, it's a 2000 US dollar Azure services credit, which can be used for a proof of concept environment, an AVD environment. I would strongly urge you to speak to your partners. Uh, they kept, kept up to date. They've got a strong relationship here with Microsoft Tech for Social Impact, the amazing work they do, um, and they can advise you and support you and help you uh, on how you can spend those 2000 US dollars of Azure service credits. You know, I always say if somebody was to give me 2000 US dollars of Amazon vouchers, I'd spend them in a heartbeat. But you know, when you when you give somebody 2000 US dollars of Azure credits, it can be a bit of a challenge. So speak to your uh, partners, Pew, and they can help you um, uh, show you how you can spend them. And also they can help you with the process of registration. You know, if you're a nonprofit, you're a UK based charity, um, the, the the registration process is is extremely simple. Um, I always say it's probably one of the one of the, the easiest grants uh, discounts you you apply for. Um, but they can guide you through the process. And if there's any issues in terms of um, rejection or you believe that you should have been approved and you're not being approved, um, again, they've got a good relationship with myself at Tech for Social Impact uh, and we can help overcome those challenges as well. 
Uh, and then you've got the uh, Microsoft Surface device discounts as well. Um, uh, eight percent on that uh, Power BI uh, Dynamics 365 sales enterprise. So there's continuous support from Microsoft Tech for social impact. Um, you know, we're we're slightly different to the larger Microsoft where we rely heavily on uh, our nonprofits to keep us going. Uh, the small bits of profit that we make um, in terms of margin, we get to keep that money and we get to reinvest that money back into the nonprofit sector. Now, just to give you a uh, quick idea of the, the sort of figures that we're, we're talking about. 3.8 US billion dollars uh, was donated back in fiscal year 2023. Now, if we were a country, we would be the 11th largest country in terms of giving back. So huge, huge numbers and growing year on year on that. $242 million uh, was donated by Microsoft employees. Uh, that includes company match um, in 116 countries across the world. And there's currently 325,000 nonprofit organizations equipped with modern, secure, and scalable cloud solutions via our partners such as Pew. So massive numbers, um, and hopefully, um, you know that that demonstrates our commitment to the nonprofit sector. Now, just to wrap up, the question really is: What is our role in modern day? Now, Milton Friedman, who's a renowned economist. He said that the role of a company is to serve its shareholders, that greed is good. But actually, if we look at the definition, it's changed and it's evolved because it turns out that co companies don't operate in some parallel universe or a vacuum outside of the planet. We are all affected by the world around us. That's us, me, you guys in that room, uh, our partners, uh, whether it's global warming or it's poverty or it's our next market in Africa or the wars that we're seeing. So the new definition of what company needs to do, that's every company, came from the Business Roundtable. And that's 181 CEOs who come together. And they said the role of a company is not just to serve shareholders, but the role of a company is to serve stakeholders. And our stakeholders are our employees, our partners such as Pew, but most importantly, our customers. And that's you guys in that room. And that's the communities that we operate in. And the philosophy at Microsoft is simple. Companies that can do more, should do more. And I believe, um, especially with this event today, we are doing more. And with that, I'd like to say a huge thanks to each and every one of you again for the uh, great work that you do in the nonprofit sector. And a massive thanks to Pew for giving me the opportunity to share our Tech for Social Impact program today. Thank you. Thank you, Naveed. Um, we've just got one last slide. So I know um, we're almost at time, so I think Elved's just going to get the slides back up. But I just wanted to get um, one final slide with sort of four key takeaways from the session, really, um, depending on where you are in the process, what, what you're currently using. So I think going back to what Avion started off with, um, if you are still using on-premise uh, Office, so that's basically any Office that isn't in the cloud. So Office 2016, 2019, 2021, for example. Um, we do highly recommend moving to Office or like Avion said, to get the extra security features, Microsoft 365, but both of them um, will act as a prerequisite for Copilot then, which is the next step. Um, so again, if anyone's interested in starting to use Copilot, um, come and chat with us. We can, we can process a couple of licenses for you and the, how we found most people starting to use it is maybe just to buy a couple of licenses or to buy maybe five to ten licenses for one department and then get them using it so because they're all in the same department then um, they they can collaborate and sort of see the, the, the true value of those licenses then um, the next point then so if you are concerned about security again uh, have a chat with Avion Avion knows everything about security in Microsoft um, <laughs> and especially around like you were saying about if you are starting to think about using copilot to make sure that you've got the security in place from microsoft um so that you've got your access policies in place um you want to do that before you start using it because you don't want users asking copilot questions and ending up um having access to documents that they shouldn't so if there's access controls in place to start with copilot will know where the boundary is to look to to give them those results back then. 
And finally, um, if you are interested in getting set up for hybrid meetings and events yourself, similar to these kind of solutions and the ones we've discussed, Elved's your man, so he's our head of AV. Um, he's more than happy to have a chat with you, whether that's today in person, you can come up and speak to any of us, or afterwards, just give us a call. Um, so Elved will have a chat and sit down and work out what your requirements are, um, go through some potential solutions, and then come up with a solution then that will meet all your needs and within budget. So, yeah, so they're the sort of four key takeaways, I'd say. And like I said, we're here all day, so come up and chat with us. Um, that's it for the main presentation. So thank you again for coming today. We have, we're slightly over, but if anyone has got any questions, we did want to sort of open the floor. Or if we've got anything um, hybrid, Tom. But if, if anyone has got any questions, now's your time. Can we come back? Yeah, yeah. Come um, on, come on, should my integrated um, co-pilot and we're still on the back? A small the <laughs> so just just to repeat to so everyone's aware, so the question was how does Copilot work with a Welsh language then? So I think Avion can answer that. Um Mad, do we have a question on the back? Um the question we with funny with you name, when we can read millionaire or dog venue, article in there for where you create a large language model for the native one. So one question on the camarade. But go recognize the need you call translation service or found um, Microsoft there or Google are the native of any one. And you then look well, I should have done we've got a dog then in mass that and the Gumrad, you actually create a back now model. So you say how do they are you the native one? So in English, yeah. so that everybody um, is aware. Um, Copilot doesn't work in Welsh. It's been trained in English with a load of English documents, um, millions of documents and websites to create that large language model that the AI uses to be able to create its own documents. Okay. Yeah. So no, but you could use Welsh translation services that are available online to to convert the results. Thank and the much. results are never perfect. You're going to have to do some work yourself anyway. But it's done a lot of the work for you. I've got you started. Yep. Any further questions? Uh, just just one about Azure. Is is it your part of if you have uh, Microsoft three six five? Business is as your part no. of the ICP Center. So there's a confusion here because in Microsoft 365, Entra used to be called Azure AD, and people think you then get an Azure subscription as part of that. Entra or Azure AD works within the Azure data center, but Azure is a separate subscription that you sign up to, and once you get that subscription, you can use any of the services within the draw. You can do VMs, create your own AI, um, do some IoT work with the with sensors in your buildings, all that. You can do anything you want in that. But it's a pay-as-you-go service, okay? So whatever you start up in the draw, you will then get billed for it. And obviously, with the credit, you have two thousand pounds, two thousand dollars, sorry, of credit to um, work with what you've got to. Okay. Um, how do you know how to get a pilot? So, do you have to have the Microsoft three six five? So, how do you know if you've got Microsoft three six five or your okay? So sorry, just just to make sure everyone can hear, especially hybrid as well. The question was, how do you know if you've got Copilot? How do you know if you've got Office 365 or Microsoft 365 or, or which version? Okay. So Microsoft gives people Copilot. Now Copilot is the web version that I showed you at the start, which allows you to um, ask questions from the web. As long as you've got Office 365 or Microsoft 365. You then have access to the web version. But there, 
I probably should have emphasized this more to you in the presentation. Then there's a product called Copilot for Microsoft 365. And it's that Copilot for Microsoft 365 that gives you access to your documents, to the functionality within the office, like with Excel PowerPoint. Um, whether you've got Microsoft 365 is a bit more difficult because it's the tools that are used to administer your Office 365. If you have to use your phone when you log in from a different place or something and put that number in, if you're doing that, you more than likely have got Microsoft 365. Okay, that's an, that's an easy non techy way of knowing that you have got those. So I think if, if, if any, anyone here has their own sort of IT team, so for example, our technical team here, you'd be able to check in the admin center then and see exactly what licenses. So you could ask your IT team if, if you have got an IT team or if you deal with an external sort of managed service provider, they can probably do the same then. Okay, I think we should probably stop there just because we are slightly over. Um, but like I said, we are here all day. If anyone else has got any questions, please come up to us. We're here literally till four, four o'clock whenever it finishes. So um, yeah, apart from that, thank you again, Joff and Val, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.